College Omega Select Board meeting to order February 23rd, 7 o'clock. First on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the February 9th meeting. or additions? Okay. And I'll move that we accept the minutes as presented. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. The minutes of the February 9th meeting are approved. Uh, number two on the agenda is to approve the uh, time sheets for the office, the Oysters, Highway, and Transfer Station. Number three is that the select board will over all the orders, a review, and sign them. Um, first, I would also like to, if it's um, agreeable with everybody, we received a excess weight permit from Miller Construction. I'd like to add it onto the agenda. In addition to the Into the addition, one that we have. Does anybody have any objection? No, no objection. Okay. And it's for Miller? Miller Construction. So number four on the agenda is two weight ex two excess weight permits. One from Lindwell Drilling from Guilford Lamont. Um, John Clerk will send an invoice for the fee because we charge a fee now. We have them for quite some time. They didn't send a fee. We have them from Miller Construction and they have paid their fee. Um, and I don't remember correctly. I know we have our little uh, attachment on how to use the uh, the roads, but there was something else that we added to it. Do you remember what it was? Yeah, uh, limiting them to class two and class three roads. Limited to? Right, okay. as opposed to using class four and town trails. Yeah, okay. I think that actually ended up being in number five. Yeah, Did you get that Miller? Was part of the number yeah. five. Miller, yeah. construction. Limited to class two and three mm -hmm. roads. If, if you go back to your minutes, it's in number five. Ah. It would be the same wording. Yeah. Two and three. Okay. In fact, I'll even move it so you can use it. You just cut and paste it. <laughs> I will move that we approve the Miller construction and the Linwell Ruin excess weight permits with the usual restrictions, plus limiting them to class two and class three roads. I second it. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the two excess weight permits have been approved. Oops. Um, does anybody at this time have anything else to add to our um, agenda? Usually this meeting is very light. If we don't, uh, there's no public concerns. Um, oh, I know what we're going to add to the, uh, Judy would like to speak about the request for the proposal for yeah. pay as you throw. Well, going so we're going to have to, my oh, okay. time, but we can, we can do it now. We'll put it sure. on the agenda. Sure. Okay. Okay. Okay, Judy. Okay. Yep. Um, if you each have a copy of the RFs, RFP, uh, pay as you throw, and uh, actually how this came about was who in fact did speak to the person at Brattleboro who sent us a copy 
of their RFP asking for bags. And so basically what I did when we got it was literally cross out the word Brattleboro and added Jamaica. And then there were some questions about the size of the bags uh, and how many we were going to be ordering and uh, so forth. But all of the conditions are in here. Actually, if you look under background information, you see where uh, Brattleboro, that one uh, was missed. So uh, Terry said that she would take that out when we vote on having whatever we were going to do. So the conditions are all there. You may want to just kind of peruse it a little bit and see. Uh, we've changed the time frame on the second page. We're going to make it a little bit earlier, and we're going to ask that they be done by May 15th. Instead of June 1st. Instead of June 1st. So that's why that's in blue. And then, uh, the different things that are the legal ease around the RFPs, they are on the reservation of rights. Knows a lot about. One thing that struck me, uh, uh, number B, letter B, a different translucent color for each size bag. Where are you now, page? It's page First one. Page. Where is it? Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, is there a particular reason why? Is this what what was in the brow No. Oh. I added that. Uh, the, what was necessary was uh, that we add the word translucent okay. because that was not in brown barrels. But it's in a different color? It, it, we can go that way or we can have it the same. Well, I was going to suggest the same because uh, what's going to happen is every town needs to have their own color. Uh -huh. And Winhall will have their color, Wardsboro will have their color. Uh -huh. And we should have all of our bags, I think, the same color. Okay, well. Uh, does it make any difference that we're going to have our name imprinted? Uh, only because people may be uh, watching them go into the, to the compactor from a distance. They may not be able to see the word Jamaica on it. Uh -huh. um, okay. Because, you know, if, if, let's say our little bags are blue and our big bags are green, and Winhall's big bags are blue, yeah. then we, we, we might have some confusion yeah. as to whether a Winhall bag is going on or Jamaica. We'll bag. have to find that out because... Um, That's a good... We'll have before we order. Right. What color we call Yeah, because I don't I don't know what wind halls are, nor do I know what Wardsboro um, what they're doing. So I'll we'll have to follow up. So you'll on check that. on that to yeah, see what colors they're gonna order. So I guess if you want to make <clears throat> it's up to the board, if you want to make a uh, cross out different colors uh, for the different size bags, we can certainly do How that. How about put the word same instead of different color? Okay. The same translucent color for each size bag. And then if you ask Wardsboro and uh, Winhall if they don't have a bag color picked out, why don't we pick out a bag color and say, okay, this is what we're doing. Yeah, what we're doing. You know, instead of going back there, this is, we want this color. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We may have to see the, what colors are available from the Yeah, we don't have. know. Oh, we don't know yet. Okay. So we'll have to. All right, so we'll have to work on that. Okay. Uh, while you're talking to Wardsboro though, and, and Winhall, Maybe you could you can get their pricing if you don't already have it. I have. What do you do? Yes. Uh, Wardsboro uh, actually is, are going to be two and three, just the just like ours. ours. And Wardsboro, um, you were there that night. Yeah, that I didn't see the vote. So yeah, I and, and I, uh, so I don't have that. But I, you know, with two out of three, I think we need to go with the two. Uh, Three, two, two, yes. Three. Although I think the, the more we know before town meeting, the better. So maybe mm -hmm. we should contact some. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I have contacted. Okay. And she never called me back. Oh, okay. So I just have to follow up on another phone call. Um, let me. Uh, oh, let's go back one more suggestion. When you're talking to them, you may want to offer them an electronic version of our. 
our, our piece and they don't have to invent the wheel? Okay, actually Terry will probably okay, do that. Okay, Because so. uh, uh, they might be going through the same right. discussion that we went through. So, any questions or changes? Let's just hope it all goes smoothly. Yeah. I actually do have a preference, uh, but that's my own preference, and that is the drawstring bag uh, rather than the wave top, basically because that's, we've had both at home, and the, the drawstring is far superior than When I say wave top, I can't picture it. It's well, they look like they have like little handles, like two little in. handles. Yeah. Like. Oh, well, they're the ones you just tied together. Yeah, tied together. The drawstring yeah. is much better. Yeah. Just right. Tie it up. I mean, that to be more secure, secure too. It secures yeah. it a lot better. Are secure. Is it? Yeah. Because a lot of people won't may not hook them all together. I mean, when I have the wave ones, I yeah. do one and then I do the other. And they all get three times. Right. <laughs> Some yeah. of the loops very, that go through. And <laughs> it's very specific. So do we want to modify this and now just say... Um, the drawstring? Or do you want to wait and see the cost? All this is a proposal. Let them give us a price on both. Yeah, then we can make decisions. Okay. Then we can make decisions. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, anything else? I'd like to move that... Uh, that we accept this RFP and we send it out uh, as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Has been and thank you for following up on this. Um, thank so you, so Jerry. We and did not have to reinvent. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't think for us to sit down and get all of that information. Yeah, so you'll find out the colors yes. of the bags that we need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the that's the only thing that's left. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, that, what will happen is when we get the RFP back from the manufacturers, they will choose which option. Yeah, which option. Oh, we'll we'll actually, we'll do that. both. Okay. Yeah. Right. We may not have that the option. The RFPs for both. Right. Oh, that, we don't. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to let people know what's going on, but the specifics we may not have before the meeting Okay. 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 All right, there's no public concerns. Um, Lou, do you have anything to add? Well, it's a good segue from what you just talked about. Um, uh, I want to bring up a little bit of uh, an issue that had come up regarding um, uh, pay as you throw. Uh, if you recall, um, uh, caretakers were going to be required by the state to be licensed as haulers. A number of caretakers evidently took this concern to uh, Oliver, yes. and um, Oliver um, discussed it with other legislature, le legislators and came up with a, uh, an exemption, which uh, is part of a House bill. I don't know if it's passed the, uh, the House yet, but it's part of a bill that uh, will exempt haulers or caretakers from being defined as haulers by the state. And uh, I bring that up because um, just because the state's not going to require them to be haulers, we have to have requirements for the caretakers and how they're going to be uh, dealt with as they come to our transfer station. From now, any transfer station. From any transfer station. Yeah. How is that distinguished ours? between caretakers hauling trash and haulers hauling trash? Well, number one, caretakers have, oh, well, haulers. Um, and caretake. Well, let me let me get to that question in a minute. Uh, what what the what the Windham Solid Waste District is going to do is to come up with, with a with a policy for caretakers that will be the same for all of our transfer stations that are in the district. Now remember, towns can go beyond what the district does. The district can go beyond what the state does. So the state, although they're exempting uh, caretakers from being uh, classified as haulers. The district will probably be class having a classification called caretakers, and caretakers will <coughs> have to license themselves with the district. But the licensing process is much less rigorous than what the state was going to require. Mm -hmm. um, basically, all we need to know from the haulers is <coughs> the fact that they are I mean, caretakers is the fact that they are caretakers, 
and the fact that, and how many vehicles that they have, because they will get a sticker for their vehicles. And they will then need to also uh, present a recycling plan. In other words, just because they're caretakers who are not going to be classified as followers doesn't exempt them from having to recycle or offer recycling as part of their services. The state law says that if you accept trash, you have to also accept recycling. Doesn't matter whether you're a hauler, a caretaker, uh, a, a town, or whatever, but if you offer that service to the public, you have to offer recycling. So, uh, the, the district ordinance, which is being modified now to reflect the realities of this new uh, change at the state, will, um, will have that new classification called. Now, do you caretaker. think that that's going to go through if it's still in bill form? It should go through, but you know, one never knows. Yeah. Uh, in other words, just because it even passes the House doesn't mean it's going to pass right. the Senate. Right. But we're proceeding with the under the assumption that it will, so that we can, because we have we were just about to accept to vote our ordinance in two weeks ago, and then when we learned of this, we postponed that vote to wait until after uh, the legislature's decided what they're going to do. It'll make it a little easier for the haulers and for the caretakers. Then back to my question. Differentiate between a hauler and a caretaker. That's exactly right. Uh, and the difference, the actual legal definition, if, the, if this bill passes, will be if hauling trash is incidental to your business. Uh, so in other words, if you uh, have a pickup truck and your job, your, your job is to go around from house to house to house to house picking up trash, that is not incidental to your business. That is your business. So you will be classified as a hauler. If your main business is watching over people's property, snow plowing, uh, you know, yard work, uh, cleaning, but hauling the trash is an incidental part of your business, then you're going to be classified as a caretaker. So that's the difference in the classification. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up so that as we approach town meeting, you'll understand that, and uh, I'm sure that topic is going to come up. Yeah, and Today. that reminds me, I really do not want to deal with caretaker issues. I think that having the two meetings that we have already had, uh, where the caretakers have been very much in charge, uh, it would not be appropriate for a town meeting. I think we need to really focus on the residents this time. They have not had any uh, meeting as such. I mean, they could have come, but the whole uh, agenda was uh, caretakers. So that's what I would like to do as I present what we're going to be doing, is that this specifically is for residents. And uh, if you haven't, if the caretakers have any questions, you know, come and ask us personally or give us a phone call. In fact, it whatever. may not be a bad idea sometime around the May time frame to, uh, have a meeting of the caretakers uh, in our community. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'm actually planning some meetings uh, probably around April or so uh, in, and inviting residents to come in or whatever. So and whether we'll have any action, I don't know. But I think we need to offer some educational mm -hmm. uh, yeah, time. That's the time the education. Yeah, program. right. Uh, what we might think about doing after town meeting is, we have a waste uh, ordinance in Jamaica. We might think about bringing that up and looking at it and see if we ought to modify it based on our uh, uh, on what we what we've decided on and we'll be presenting at town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that and that and maybe the hearings for that ordinance would be a good opportunity for people to come in and uh, and speak. At well, I think I'd rather just focus on what's happening July 1st. I, I think if, if the, the ordinance needs to be done, um, then we can do that, but I don't think we should combine those two. Because, I think the ordinance the should why, be done before, maybe before July 1st. Okay, okay to but go with the I think you're right, maybe we should have a different set of discussions. Yes, absolutely. Right. Um, one of my concerns is having sat at the two caretaker meetings and having uh, brought it up at a recent benefit, there's a lot of uh, 
tension. This is a very high energy topic. And I think that that's the reason why I need to narrow the discussion because it can be all over. Uh, the chaos that can take, uh, that has taken uh, place in both the caretakers and this meeting and benefit was just really, it was hard to keep it contained to start to answer questions. So I think the more we narrow what our focus is, the better off we're going to be around that. So. I like your idea of focusing on the homeowners at town yeah. meeting and right. we'll, we'll, we'll take right. the caretaker concerns at a different time. Yeah. So the caretakers seem to know with the meetings that they've had and what is expected of right. them. The residents are, I think, very are here once in yeah. a while. What does this mean? What does that mean? Right. Mandatory recycling. Uh, are they going to split open our bags? Are we going to have to do yeah, this? Oh, and, yeah. You know, I said that's still in the working stage. Mm -hmm. I don't have an answer right now, but um, we will have to have an answer by yeah. July 1st. And why do we have to pay for bags? We've already right. paid for taxes. And I said that's what's going to offset the taxes. The bags. Yeah. So hopefully that'll work out. Hopefully they understand that part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the things that I plan to talk about. It, that it will have. Um, hopefully that. it will have a, a marked uh, uh, change in our uh, taxes that we'll be paying. For so. I mean, might not the first year, but over the several years it should. Yeah. yeah. And actually, if you want to point out, we can we'll point out at the town meeting that. The sixty thousand dollars revenue that we're we're right. has brought our taxes down a couple of percent. Yes, right. and, and uh, yeah, I had thought that since you know everybody's going to have a book most likely that would have been safe to turn to this page. Good point. And we'll yeah. Yeah. It, so, uh, so that will help. But yeah, it's a highly charged uh, whole thing, and it, it affects all of us. And uh, one of the things that I want to also make clear is that this board did not make these changes. Uh, rather, it was the state legislature <laughs> that did it. Um, and if they really have any big complaints, that they really need to contact their legislators. Mm -hmm. And we're just following what's been sent <clears throat> down to us. So, okay. Do you have anything else to do? I think actually that was Lou. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I was following up on what we were doing. That's right, too. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. That, no, that's the extent of that. Okay, Luke Judy. Okay. Uh, well, and I, I already talked with you a little bit, but for the good of our group here, um, I'm still having a great deal of difficulty getting the easements in. Um, the Heinz easement has been out for about two months now and uh, Tweedy we just really gave them that recently we can't get our permit until we have these easements that's part of the packet that so we're just kind of being uh, held off here about uh, even if we have to change the easement tell us what we need to do just it, it feels like it's gone out there in space and nobody seems to know where it's at and I can't get a handle on it uh, where it is. So um, as you can tell in my voice, I'm, I am frustrated. <laughs> and you probably know what this is all about. <laughs> Believe me, I do. <laughs> now, we're looking for an easement to put the well on somebody's property. We're just looking for an easement to go over that property of well. Exactly. And then and to drill the well. And to drill the well. Right. The, well, the well will go on next to the old yeah. spring that we have. On right. our property? No, it's on our property. Oh, so we're looking for an easement right. to actually put the well on their property. Well, it, right. we already have a, quote, shallow well there. And I think that is in the, in the original. I believe so, yes. So now we're asking to be able to drill a well and to take equipment over the land. Uh, because and he owns the land it. Yeah. right next to the town hall okay. to a certain right. point. Then the Tweedies who own the little White House, they own just a just a, a, just a yeah. Yeah. very little bit of the land where right. the beach field is. 
So we need their permission. I, I don't believe, it doesn't look like that equipment would go way over there. Right. I think they're going to stay as close as they can to the town hall building. But we need that permit because, just in case. Just in case. Yeah. You so know, you're saying that the well will go in the same spot now as the... I uh, think it's going to be over to the side a little bit more. Okay. Than, uh, I, and I have papers here, so later I can get sure, it out for you. Yeah, it's supposed to go next to the spring. Yeah, I think Something he had like to that. move it just a little bit from where the uh, spring is, but not much yeah. to really interfere. It's been a long process. Oh, yeah. it's been a Do you have any process. idea or do you have any thoughts on why? That is it still is it in the lawyer's hands or is it the plan? Well, it has been in the lawyer's hands, uh, and I, I can't really get a hold of it. I know you. I, had, I did talk yeah. to Hans's lawyer. I called to say that, um, you know, it was a matter of urgency mm -hmm. because of the grant that we're yeah. we're getting, we're, we're receiving, and. Um, she informed me that we had a town lawyer, that she shouldn't be talking to me. And mm. I explained I did yeah. not understand that, but what I just wanted her to know, that it was the urgency of this process. Mm -hmm. And she says, well, she hasn't had time to review this or that. I mean, it's only a one-page easement. Yeah. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at it. And so it's the lawyer that appears to be... It's the lawyer that seems to I be holding so. it. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then, but, but the major issue is that we really should not be using that building without uh, water. So, and of course we're using it um, with the porta power, porta, porta potty for town meeting. So uh, that's why we really have to get on it because there are activities that are starting up in yeah. the springtime and of course summertime is a big deal. So that's where it'll be our um, golden well. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody knows where that easement is, <laughs> well, you deserve credit for perseverance. Yeah. Oh, I, do. I really <laughs> appreciate you. Uh, I, I don't. I think maybe should we wait till the end of the week before we call the two? I, I don't even know their phone number. Yeah, and they're they work, so they're really not. Yeah. Are both of them using the same lawyer, or are they? Uh, I don't know. No. They're using different words. Well, I don't know. No, they don't have a lawyer. The Tweedies? The Tweedies didn't, unless they're going to get one when they, yeah. when they received our easement. Yeah. So, right now it's just the Heinzes that have counsel. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'll move on to the transfer station. <laughs> uh, pretty much covered most of what I had, which was the RPF. Uh, RFP, I mean. and um, that we accomplished um, the list of su of suppliers. I have that, and um, Bob Spencer, who actually is the director of Wyndham Solid, he was the one who gave me all of the names because uh, he's been working with Brattleboro and also Vernon in helping them get the things together. So that really worked out well. And I put that on uh, Terry's desk for her so she can begin to uh, send them out now that we have voted on them. Uh, the last thing I have uh, actually is a situation that I don't think there's any answer to, but I thought I'd bring it up. Uh, we at the transfer station are having some problems with uh, having pickup of our paper, particularly. Uh, over Christmas <coughs> vacation, I had called and it took approximately two weeks after I had called to have a pickup happen. And it, what happens is that it has to be closed, the container. And all of the paper goods now go into the compact, which means that now we're paying for that weight. Uh, it's happening again. Um, I was talking to Mark today, and he told me that he called a week ago 
about picking up on Monday uh, the paper. And uh, they said, yes, we'll be out. But then he has found out that uh, they're having problems with trucks, you know, and all of it makes sense. The snow is also a problem, and I think another person was out sick. Um, in, so we still have not had the, we did have the original pickup, but now we're in the same position again where it's been closed. Uh, so no more paper can go into the recycling and it's going in with contactor. And I don't know what the answer is. I guess I could ask the, the chair of the board. Well, <laughs> I, will, I will make a call, call tomorrow and find out. Okay. Uh, uh, I called, I mean, I've talked to them many, many times. We've, I've even talked to the executive director about how they can restructure their recycling collection program so it will be more efficient and mm -hmm. better, uh, better supporting our member towns. Because we do out of district stuff as well. And uh, we're talking about stopping the out of district stuff and only re, you know, collecting from our towns. I will say though that the snow we've been having has caused some trouble. Um, uh, they've been putting in an awful lot of overtime, which has uh, uh, caused us problems. You know, we're, we're also the district hitting a huge shortfall this year in revenues. The economy is way down. Uh, but worse than that, paper mills are closing because people aren't reading newspapers like they used to. People aren't, uh, you, there's a lot of electronic mail now and very you know, much less use of paper for mail and the like. And some paper mills have actually closed. Uh, I do also know that uh, we're sending our paper now to China because we can't find any place that will market it. And normally we, we, we get $60 a, a time for paper. It costs us twenty dollars a ton to send to China. Mm. So um, there are a lot of issues that are going along in this whole area of recycling. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will follow up on this, and it may not. Even, I, mean, I may even put it in writing and, and ask and bring it to the full board and let the full board know that uh, we're having trouble, and maybe they'll be able to express the problems that their towns are having. Yeah. But I'm glad you told me this because I thought it was being resolved. Yeah. If it's not, then. Uh, I'll, I'll Get on that. Not as the chair of the district, but as the supervisor for this town. Okay. It doesn't help our recycling process. You no. know, people go back to just right. dumping mm -hmm. again. Yeah. And most of them exactly. want to recycle. So when was the last time that, that he called, you know? A week ago today. And it hasn't been picked and up? It has not been right. picked that's, that's, up. Um, we did have one day of snowstorm. What day was that? Saturday. Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. 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 yeah. Although that's sometimes their, their overtime day where they pick up. Uh -huh. But. Uh, yeah, I, and he did say that one of the drivers was out sick. So they got backup drivers. Oh, they do. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when I was up there today, I, I try to go at least once a week just to see how things are going, and uh, you know it was closed off uh, for the paper goods. We don't have quite the same problem with the plastics as we do, and yet everything is so much plastic, you would think that that would be more the... It doesn't fill up much <laughs> yeah. Well, see, one of the things that other towns have that we don't have, and I've been thinking about this, is we sometimes have a separate paper and a separate cardboard box. Uh -huh. We only have one for both. Yeah. So maybe we need to go and get a separate box for both, and, uh, and that would alleviate to the point maybe where the, the plastic is filling up as fast as Mm -hmm. some of the others. Yeah. So, as I said, I don't know, well, actually, we'll see what happens here, but it, it is a dilemma that we're dealing with. And that's all. Okay, thank you, Judy. Paul? No? Okay, we are you serious? <laughs> Can I fake now or later? <laughs> Everything is under control. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> all right, I just have a few little announcements here. Um, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, uh, there's a public meeting from the uh, Transportation Department. Wyndham Regional yeah. is putting it on its in towns, and I will go to that to follow through. They've been working on trying to get transit from Brattle Road up to Stratton on and Dairy and whatnot. So it's just a follow up, and I will go to that one. There's one in, on March 17th, too, and I'll follow up with that. It'll be the second public meeting. 
We received a notice from the Wyndham County Sheriff's Department just to tell us there was a glitch in their uh, reporting system, but it's been fixed. Uh, and we received a letter from uh, Cotton Velasky Architecture and Interiors from New Fane, um, telling, just giving us information. David had called me last week. David is? David Cotton oh. is one of the engineers and uh, architects, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And he heard through uh, Beck Engineering that we're possibly trying to put up a new town garage. Um, they have done the work for Wilmington and for Winhall. Uh, and he gave us information on the Winhall uh, in Wilmington uh, model that, they, that he's put together that has a lot. Um, and he said that any time if we have if we go with this follow through with putting up a new garage that um, he would become be glad to come to our meeting at you know no obligation and talk about what we have and he says if we did accept them um, they already have the plans if one of those would work it would be less costly for them to design it again uh, if we had a different design but this is just information that they're sending out um, i think it's a good idea us. to follow up on this yes so uh, these are engineers these are architects okay. right. they designed the building they they've, got a, they've got a couple of you know, plans, you know, already. the girl already, that would be save a lot of time and energy. He said it would probably save money if yeah. you know, we'd have to start from scratch again. This is the group uh, in uh, New Fame, right yeah, there. Uh, yeah. Although I, I've heard that the state has some plans that, mm -hmm. that are available to towns. Okay, to, oh. uh, so we can look at both. We'll, look into that yeah, we'll look into yeah. that too. We'll look into everything. Um, as soon as the weather gets warmer, we'll meet with, I'll call Beck Engineering and meet with Jess, mm -hmm. the girl that's uh, going to come check everything out. But it's too cold to stand there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I know one of the major problems that we're going to have is the, uh, it's in the flood zone. Right. So um, somebody did make a suggestion. Um, it's just a thought for us that we own, and I don't know how much we own, we have to do a little bit of uh, looking into it. As you're going to the transfer station on the right hand side, just to pass Castle Hill, we own that property. Oh. It, would that be a possibility maybe to, I mean, you have to do a lot of blasting, that you could use the materials for the highway department? I don't know how, I don't know exactly how, maybe you could write it up whatever. Um, possibly putting it there if we couldn't put it down there. I don't know. Um, you know, move the gate to the transfer station up further. And, uh, maybe so it's right along there? Where right the along there, is. yes. I don't know how much property that we own, um, what we fit there, um, but it's a possibility. There's no other place in town that I can think of that we could put a garage that wouldn't be in, you know, like down by the grade school, two-story property. I mean, that road usually washes up first, so yeah. that's not good. And it's in the flood flow too. Yeah. So well, unless anybody has any other ideas or? It's a tough problem. We've been talking about the possibility of elevating to get above the flood line. Right, but I we have to get the specifics about from engineers about right how far engineers. we're going to go yeah. before we see if that's and practical. And would we get permits to do it too? Yeah, yes. so, so, um, the state, state and all that stuff. But that was just a possibility yeah. and hopefully, mm -hmm. um, you know. It's so. a testament to our road crew that they continue to do such a good job with oh. some fairly yeah. shabby Material, material, yes. Yeah. I mean, that building is That's just, a tough one to it's work. A, yep. a disaster. It's going to, you know, it, it's not good working environment. Go ahead. That, that reminds me of something I should have mentioned. I'll Go ahead. come back to me afterwards. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Talking about equipment, we've kind of, we, we had talked several weeks ago about uh, Keith had asked to, to switch for, to buying uh, steel wheels to aluminum wheels. And I guess in the last week they'd broken three wheels. So originally the plan was that we're just normal attrition, we we're going to go to the more expensive aluminum wheels. 
And what he's done at this point is we're going to just replace him as we need to replace him. As opposed to waiting for the next budget. Because okay. it doesn't make any sense. Re replacing with aluminum? Yeah. yeah. That doesn't make any sense to continue to replace ones that are breaking with this weather. Okay, the aluminum ones would last. Uh, they yes. Okay. What, whatever the ones he's buying, I don't want to quote okay. exactly, but I think they're aluminum ones, magic, something. But, um, but we broke three in a week. You know, it's just the weather has been just it's been tough yeah. it's been on the tough equipment. On Right. And like I said, back to the business, they're doing a great job of maintaining stuff, but there's only so much they can do. Right. But rather than waiting for the next budget, which is what we initially discussed, right. I went ahead and said, go ahead and, I think he already done it, but to go ahead and, and make that, because we already agreed to move to the higher cost. Right. We might as well do it now as opposed to continuing to shell out, you know, a couple hundred bucks a wheel every time something breaks. Every time something breaks and these will last longer. Yeah. Okay. How's the new truck? The new well, Donald loves his new truck. We should bring Donnie. He has a radio. He finds something new every oh. day. <laughs> I'm telling you, we went to pick it up to Wilson, and it was like, dude, this is a big deal for him. He was thrilled. And he went over the whole thing, and he's given all the directions, and my eyes are glossing over. I know his truck's all done. But he, he's, it's good. I like his enthusiasm and energy. Because he really is taking care. He came back, and he cleaned it, and he sprayed, he sprayed uh, whatever, you know, coating on the bottom. And, and he's really, it's really, <laughs> really into it. It's funny to watch. It's but it's good because it's good for us. So he's putting yeah. that kind of enthusiasm. He's taking care of it. He's doing it's, a great job. He tried with the old truck, too. Yeah, there's only so much you could do with that one. But now he's starting from scratch. He's doing it right from the beginning. Uh, oh, he's thrilled. He had a son. He's showing the truck around. Uh, the little boy says to me, I'm the first kid to sit in this truck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of trucks, too, I think we need something in writing from, is it Delory that we traded the truck with? Yes. Okay, because now... Uh, I was talking to Keith the other day, and Delora keeps coming up with a different price for us. I thought we had already been writing. We got, did we have that? Another change? Another change. Oh. They came and they looked at it to see what it would cost. First, they were going to give us $13,000. Right. Okay. Right? Yeah. More or less. Okay. Something around that neighborhood. $13,000. Yeah. And then um, they decided it to. to like five? To eight. Oh, eight? I think. Eight. And. Now, he said it's going to cost them 3000 to fix it. So, Keith had it, he didn't have it written down, but he was telling me that they want more money. So, somebody's going to have to call Delory and get something in writing because he keeps changing his mind. Yeah, I'm going to have to come back. Wants. When I talked to him on the phone, I can't remember exactly what I had in front of me, whether it was an email because or something. We'll, we'll look into that. Look into that. I did talk to him about this whole thing. We decided how to go about do it. And, and now he's added more. So there's something going on. Uh, mm. He was pretty confident that the way we, the agreement we had was going to work out. Right, and now he's added $300,000. Yeah. So and that just was recent? Just well, recently, recently, just last yeah. week. Yeah. Okay, so, we'll have to follow so if you up could check that. in to follow yeah. up with that, that would be great. Yes. So, and I have nothing else. Uh, do you have a motion to burn? So move. Okay, we have a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned at 746. Hey, new record. No, we had 120 minutes. Oh, that's right. Well, when you weren't here, we had a good one.